Christ, and we'd respond because of our love for you. So, Father, let that be our prayer today. Father, I pray for uh, Judy Andrews as she goes through radiation treatments, that you would bring healing to her body, bring comfort and encourage her along the way. We pray for Steve as he starts a new round of chemo, that you would strengthen him day by day. Our government, uh, our leaders, our, our governor, our, our president, vice president, everyone who's making these crazy decisions that are protecting us and tr watching over us. And so, Father, we pray that you give them wisdom. Guide them day by day, moment by moment, Father. We thank you for what you are doing and how you're going to work through this process. And, and Father, when we don't understand it, you do. Your ways are so much greater and bigger than ours and than we can ever imagine or dream of. And so, Father, we call upon you and we trust in you. You are our faith and our hope. We thank and praise you that we get to worship you today. We get to dive into your word. And Father, that you're going to do something amazing today. And so, Father, we invite you to come near and close to us today. Do something that only you can do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us on uh, live video feed and on YouTube. The pictures are still out in the sanctuary. Uh, everybody's pictures uh, around the pews, and uh, it's great seeing all the pictures and praying for you uh, during this time. But I want to talk about this new prayer initiative that I'm going to start. I kind of started already emailing it out and getting it out to people so people are aware of it and what's going on. It comes from Isaiah 55, verse 6. Isaiah 55, 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Uh, so... Here's how it works. You just think of Isaiah 55, 6, and then you think about 5, 5 o'clock in the morning at 56. 5, 56 in the morning or evening. You pick. I don't care. Some people are up early and they can do that. Other people are like, I, I'm not up until noon. Okay, that's fine. Do it at night. Whatever it is, morning or night at 5, 56, you take that time and pray. As a church family, we'll be praying during this time. And pray for your, uh, your family, and pray for the government, and pray for our community, and pray for uh, our neighbors, and co-workers, and classmates, and all those people that God lays on your heart. Pray for God's guidance, pray for His wisdom, His protection, His love, His grace, His mercy, that God would do something amazing, that He would come near during this time. We just pray that that would be a time together that we would come and pray as a church family at 556. Uh, in the morning or at evening that we do that. And, and here's the other part of this. I want you to pray that God would lay one person on your heart. One person on your heart. And then that day, you'd reach out to that person. Pick up the phone and call them. Don't just send a, a note or a text, but reach out to them. Call them. Let them hear your voice. Let, let them know that, hey, I'm praying for you. I'm thinking about you today. Uh, send them a, a Facebook message with your smiling face on it. Just somehow connect with that person and reach out to them and let them know that you love them, you're caring for them, and you're praying for them as well. Max Lucado said it like this, You'll get through this. It won't be painless. It won't be quick. But God will use this mess for good. In the meantime, don't be foolish or naive. But don't despair either. With God's help, you'll get through this. I think this is a great time to be reminded. If, if you never read the book from Max Lucado, I, I'd encourage you to read that as well. If you need a copy of it, see me. I'll get you a copy or email me. I'll, I'll mail it to you or drop it off at your door and run. So you'll have that in front of you as well. So anyways, I said, take your Bibles, turn with me to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 is our text for today. Um, and I just want to walk through this because I think Isaiah's got some good words. It's the Lord speaking to Isaiah and helping him along the way. So Isaiah 55 is a, is a passage that we'll start with. Verse 1, is anyone thirsty? Come and drink. Even if you have no money, come and take choice, wine and milk. It's all free. Why spend your money for food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does no good? Listen to me, and you will eat what is good. You will enjoy the finest food. Is anyone thirsty? Have you ever been really thirsty? I mean, like so thirsty that your throat's dry, and it's like, uh, it's hard to even swallow, and you really can't even get spit in your mouth because your throat's so dry. If you ever got to that point, think about it. Would you drink out of a muddy puddle of water? Or would you drink out of the dog's dish or the, or the cat's dish? Probably not. You, you, you wouldn't do that. But I want you to think about, just for a moment, how thirsty and how dry you must get to drink something that nasty, looking, smelling, whatever the case may be. But Isaiah is really not talking about drinking water or just drinking wine and milk. He's using it as a metaphor, you know. He's trying to get our attention. He's talking about milk and wine uh, uh, as the Word of God is the word of the Lord is being compared to milk and wine. 
Think about it. When you drink wine, you get all bubbly and rejoice. Your heart, you know, you, you get all cheerful, that type of thing. Well, David said it like this in Psalms 19, verse 8. The law of the Lord is right, rejoicing the heart. It talks about enlightening the eyes and rejoicing the heart. And, and that's the metaphor that Isaiah is using, or the Lord's using back in Isaiah, that David's picking up as well, is that we can rejoice. There's joy in the Lord, and that's the wine. And then the milk is also a metaphor for growth. Um, it's a sub substance for a kid to sustain his life and nourishment to grow and understand. Wine brings joy and milk brings growth and development. What God offers is free. It's free to all of us. It's without cost. We don't have to buy God's love. We, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, short or tall or fat or whatever the case may be. It's free. Uh, people are, are always trying to buy happiness. Always trying to find a way to be satisfied. Always looking for something that will help them feel better, so to speak. They chase after it. They pursue it. They pursue happiness. And they're never finding it. They find it for a short time and then it crashes and burns. We still come up thirsty, wanting more and more. We work hard, try to buy happiness, and it never lasts. It's only short term. Let's keep going. Verse 3, come to me with your eyes wide open. Listen. Verse 3, did you get it? Come, listen, and you will find life. I will make you an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you all the unfailing love I promised David. Verse 4, see how I used him to display my power among the people. I made him a leader among the nations. You also are, will command the nations. You do not know the people unknown to you will give you and come running to obey. Because I, the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, have made you glorious. Did you catch it? The words to Isaiah, come and listen. Come. So he invites us, to, if you're thirsty, come. And now he says, come and listen. And then you see what God does next? He steps up and does all the rest. He steps in. He, he takes care of all the rest. God steps in and, and does that. Uh, this everlasting covenant he's talking about is the Messiah. Jesus is coming. The Lamb of God to take away the sin of the whole world. Jesus, who, was, uh, who knew no sin, took our sin on for us and went to the cross and died for ours. In our place, the old covenant was they had to do animal sacrifices again and again and again. But Jesus came, the spotless Lamb of God, and died. That's Good Friday. We're heading towards Easter. We're going to be there soon. And Jesus didn't just die on the cross, but he was dead uh, in the grave for three days and then rose again and sits at the right hand of God the Father. Jesus became our sin. He took on our sin so we could be forgiven. So we have, come, all who are thirsty, come. And then he says, come and listen. Verse 6, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. I would challenge you to memorize this verse. I mean, as you're getting up to pray at, at 556 or, or 556 in the evening, uh, memorize this verse. Come and seek the Lord. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Call on him while he is near. The people of Isaiah's time, uh, they were ignoring God. Uh, God was so far away from their mind, so far away from anything that uh, God could present to them. They were unaware of what God was doing. They were ignoring God. It's kind of like our world today. We kind of ignore God. We turn Him away. But Isaiah invites us to come. All who are thirsty, come and drink. Come and listen. And now in verse 6, he says, seek, seek. Here, here's our part. Uh, we, we know what God's part is, to bring, send His Lamb, Jesus, to die for us. Now here's our part. Here's where we get to step in. Uh, seek the Lord with all your heart, and you will find Him. Deuteronomy 4. We are to seek. Another word for seek is to search, is to go looking for something. Uh, I go to the refrigerator, and I open the door, and it's amazing. I just hold my hands out, and whatever I was looking for pops out of my hands. No, you know that's not true. You know that's not true. Uh, you go to the refrigerator, and as Cindy says, you might have to move something to find what you're looking for. i, I got to move the ketchup and the mustard and the milk and the juice and to get to the back to find what I'm looking for in the back of the refrigerator? Yeah, there are times that you have to do that very thing. You might have to move something. That's that seeking. That's that searching for Seek the Lord. When we seek the Lord, we might have to move something in our hearts and lives too. We might have to make some time for Him. We, we might need to change our, rearrange our schedule. We might need to make Him a more of a priority. Change our priorities. We need to seek Him. 
To seek the Lord is to look for him, to search for him. Seek him in his word as we dive into his word. Seek and see what he's saying to us. I, I was just looking at Isaiah 55 in my own Bible. I underline the word come and listen and seek. All these action steps that we are to take to follow the Lord. And we'll keep going on through that whole process. Uh, but we're to seek the Lord, to study his word, to meditate on his word, to memorize his word. I would challenge you to, to memorize Isaiah 55, 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek the Lord with all your heart. We are to seek him with everything. We have to go searching, looking for. Just like if I want that, uh, that ice cream that's in the back of the freezer, I have to go open the freezer. I got to go to the freezer. I got to open it up. I got to move all the peas and, the, and all the frozen vegetables and all those things that Cindy has in there to find the ice cream down in the bottom of the freezer. We have to go look into God's word. We have to seek for God's word. We have to go to the word of God to find it. And yep, we might have to move some things in our lives to really get what we're looking for. To seek the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul. To seek the Lord, we go to Him in prayer. We call out to Him. And, and Isaiah invites us to do that very thing. This verse, Isaiah 55, 6, we are to call out to Him. Call out to Him in prayer. Call out to Him in, by the Word of God. We go to Him to listen, to meditate on the Word of God, to take His Word into our lives and memorize it and put it into our heart. That that becomes our desire. So we become so in love that Jesus becomes the love of our lives. It's the very thing that we seek. We give him first place of our life. We, we, we set our mind on him. He becomes our direction. So everything I'm looking for, all my directions, I turn to him. My, he is my all in all. He's my desire of my heart. Talking about being thirsty. There I am. I'm thirsty already. Isaiah 55, 6. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Call on him while he is near. We can seek the Lord today. He's available to us to find. We can find Him. We might have to move some things in our lives, but we can find Him today. We are invited to call on Him. Now is the time to call on Him. Now is the time to call. And that's why I'm calling our church. Now is the time to start praying. Now is the time to seek the Lord for God's wisdom and protection, God's love and grace and mercy. We are to, the world is looking for hope. They're looking for a cure for this virus. They're looking for financial strength. They're looking for all kinds of family problems to be solved. The world wants the, the, world, wants the world to go back to normal is really what the world wants. But you know what? This is a great time for us to draw close to God. This is a great time. After World War I and World War II, after 9-11 and after this virus, the world changed. It's different. The world will be different. How about you? Will you be changed? Will you be different? Will you be different? Will your world change? Are you willing to seek the Lord while he can be found? While he's still near, are you willing to seek him? No one becomes a follower of Jesus without a desire, without going and looking for him. You just don't wake up one morning and say, man, I'm a Christian now. I'm a follower of Jesus. No, you have to go look and you have to come to him. God is near to the broken heart. God is near to those who seek him with all their heart. God is near to those who are worn out and tired and not satisfied with this world. And they go looking for something amazing. They look for Jesus. He's near to those who are humble. All we have to do is call upon him. Romans 10, 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Call on him while he is near. While he's near, what a great promise. He's right here. He's near to us. But it implies that someday he won't be. It implies that someday we won't be able to call upon him. Someday we won't be able to do that. Because we, by our sin, build a wall of separation. We continue to walk away from God. Each sin is like a brick we build on a wall. And we build this wall and we drift away from God. And before long, our, our sin has pushed us away. Well, you know, our sin has pushed God away. Our sin has removed, has been in front of us, and His presence has been moved from us as well. Each sin is our choice. We move farther and farther away from God. If we want to uh, a relationship with God, we have to draw near to Him. But if we just say, I'm going to put my relationship on hold. I'm just going to stand back and see how this virus thing works out. I'm just going to put everything on hold and just stand back and just stay at home and, and just see what happens. Well, you know, in any relationship, if you don't work on that relationship, it drifts, and you drift farther and farther away. If you think, I'll start reading the Bible when I go back to church. No, now's the time. If you think, I'll, I'll reach out to others when I can get out of my house. No, you, we can still reach out to others now. I'll, I'll do a Bible study next. We can do a Bible study now. There's ways to do that. 
If you just drift away from God, you'll lose these incredible time moments that God has designed for us. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Call on him while he is near. A couple weeks ago, I preached about the rapture and the second coming. You know, if Christ comes back and the rapture happens during this time, then he's not going to be here. He's not going to be near. And it's going to be harder and harder for us to find him and seek for him and find him during this time. So Isaiah gives us incredible words in Isaiah 55, 6. Seek the Lord now. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Call on him while he is near. Are you ready for the return of Christ? Are you ready? Let's keep going. Isaiah 55, 7. Let the wicked exchange their, their, wicked, their ways and banish the very thoughts of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God, for he will forgive generously. In order to follow Jesus, we have to turn from our life of sin. We have to walk away. It's, it's an about face. It's turning from one way and going the other way. If I wanted to go on a diet, I'd have to change the way I eat. I'd have to give up some stuff. Uh, like short-term pleasure, like ice cream and cakes and cookies and brownies and stuff like that. That short-term pleasure for a long-term gain, uh, a healthier life, a longer life, a, a smaller waistline, uh, so many things when you, when you go on a diet. Uh, to follow Jesus, we have to give up sin. And sometimes it's a, a short-term thing that we really, a pleasure that the world throws at us. We think, oh man, if I had that, I'd be so happy. And you find disappointment. We have to follow Jesus. We have to give up things to follow Jesus. We have to give up our addiction to go to heaven. We, we have to give up our pride, our selfishness to have a healthy relationship with God. I have to turn away from sin, and that's what Isaiah is talking about. Isaiah 8, verse 8 goes on to say, My thoughts are not like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond yours than you can imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. I am so thankful that God's thoughts are so much bigger than mine. I am so thankful that God's ways are so much better, better than mine. I am so thankful that God's plan is bigger, better than mine than I could ever think or ever can imagine as well. There's no way in the world that we can outthink God. And it's so hard to understand. I mean, you just start thinking about how does the earth spin at the right speed around the sun so it's not too close that it burns up or too far away that it gets too cold and how does the moon go around it which causes the water and the waves and everything else how does the seed go in the ground and next thing you know it's a huge oak tree i can't explain god's ways are so much bigger than ours and we can't explain it we don't understand it all no one knows how big god is how incredible no one can figure him out in our human mind there's no way we can set up a plan, but God's plans are different than our plans. And we are foolish if we try to fit God into a box. If we say, God, I need you to do X, Y, Z because that's good for me type thing. Uh, if we try to put God into a box or, or make him work in our time frame, so to speak. Man, I'd love to have that building up so we could use it for a food pantry on Monday. But guess what? It's not up yet. God's got another plan for that. We'll figure that out. We'll work on that. We'll get a tent or something. To, so in case it rains on Monday, we'll still be able to share food with people. Oftentimes we try to explain our way and try to, for God to figure out our purposes. And what we would need to do is follow God's purpose and realize that his plans are bigger than our plans. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. But we are called to seek him and follow him we are called to, to put our plan and trust in him. God has a plan and a purpose for every one of our lives. And, and that is incredible. Verse, verse 12. You will live in joy and peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song. And the trees and the fields will clap their hands. When once they were thorns, cypress trees will grow. Once the nettles grew, the myrtle will, be, will sprout up. These events will bring great honor to the Lord's name. They will be an everlasting sign of his power and love. What Isaiah is talking about is that the wasteland, the desert land, the wilderness, which is just grown over with thorns and thistles, one day, someday, when God comes through, when the world changes and it becomes amazing, God transforms and makes the desert into a beautiful, lush forest. Uh, he turns night to day, pain to joy. Are you ready for God to turn your life around? Are you ready for God to do something amazing? Are you seeking Him with your whole heart? 
he can be found. This chapter of Isaiah 55 is so amazing. Just think through it. Let's just review real quickly. We are called to come. Anyone who's thirsty, come is the invitation. Come and listen. And then he goes on in verse 3. Come and listen because the Lord's got something amazing. And then in verse 6, come, seek the Lord and call on Him. During this time, if, if we call on Him, God will come. So here's our opportunity. When we get serious about our relationship with God, when He becomes our priority, when we set the other stuff aside and we focus in on Him, we seek Him with our whole heart, we grab hold of the Word of God and we start to read and it comes alive to us and we ask questions and we pray and we meditate on the Scripture. We say, God, show me Your way. Show me Your plan. Lord, feed me day in and day out. Let me seek You with my whole heart. Listen to His Word. Uh, we had Ben and Jamie staying with us uh, this last six months or so, and, and Jamie is always good. She always had worship music on it. I'd come home for lunch and sit at the soap operas and all the other crazy stuff and cartoons on. She always had worship music playing. I thought, that is just awesome. But that was our, her heart as well, calling on God that he's near, listening to his word. It's time that we just turn and fall in love with him like never before. It's time that we turn to Him. We shut the news off and we look to Jesus. We look to Him. If you want to have peace, we need to find Jesus. You want to turn to Him? Now's the time to turn to Him. When time gets tough, remember that we can seek the Lord with our whole heart and He comes near to us. As Max Lucado said, we'll get through this. It won't be painless. It won't be quick. But with God's help, He'll use this mess for our good. In the meantime, don't be foolish or naive. Don't despair either. With God's help, we'll get through this. Isaiah 55, 6. Seek the Lord while He can be found. Call on Him while He is near. That's our challenge for today. That's where we're at today. I would encourage you, if you have not met the Lord, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, today's the day to do that. It's very simple. First, we admit that we're a sinner, that we need Him, that we're thirsty and hungry for Him. B is believing in Him, believing that God's Word is true. Then we, C is confess. We confess our sins to an Almighty God. He already knows about them, but we confess. We admit that we're sinners and that we need Him. And then D is dedicating your life to Him from this day forward, saying, Pastor Brian, I want to live for Jesus. From this day forward, I want to live for Him. If you've made this commitment to, this morning and you'd like to pray, I would love to pray with you. You can call me, email me, Facebook me, text me. I don't care how you get a hold of me. Uh, I'd love to share more about how you can fall in love with Jesus so you can begin to seek Him with your whole heart, so you can call upon Him. So if and when the rapture happens, which is going to be soon, we've got to be ready. Now's the time to get ready. Now's the time to fall in love with Jesus. He is our Messiah. He's the one that we love. He is our hope. He's who we turn to in these times. We'll call upon Him as a church. Isaiah 55, 6. 5, 5 o'clock, 5.56 in the morning or 5.56 in the evening. As a church, we will call upon the Lord and we'll be praying for you. Please reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. We have one more song we'd like to use in closing. Perry?
Father, we call upon you. You are the Messiah. Jesus, Messiah, our hope is in you. Father, we're going to seek you. We're going to search for you. We are going to call upon you with our whole heart and our whole lives this week, Father. We're going to join together as a church family and pray for our community and pray for one another. We're going to encourage each other. So, Father, we thank you for your message today, your word as you spoke to us today. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a great afternoon. Seek the Lord this week together.